This is another Disney podcast production. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 25 for the week of June 25th. Here we go. Hey man, uh, we are spending the week together right now, kind of. Well, I mean, I guess I came to your neighborhood, basically. Yeah, I mean, you're close to me. Yes. Yeah. I- I'm assuming that at, s- at some point this week that we have hung out at a pool together, made some margaritas at Margaritaville. Maybe um, had, yes, had hopefully many adult beverages. Yeah, maybe even went to Disney for a day. Who knows? Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see if it all worked out. How much yes. rain, how sunburnt I am by now. It's going to be great. But we did not want to leave you empty handed this week. So we wanted you to have a fun episode. And so we, thought we would talk about something that I don't think I've ever heard anybody else talk about. And that is we're going to select five things that have changed at Disney world over the last 18 months that we hope stays. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody's kind of like, Oh gosh, I can't wait till things get back to normal. And I would say we live in that camp, especially for a lot of different things, but there are a few things that have changed that, we hope stick around. So let's talk about a few. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where should we start? I would say at the beginning, because that's a very good place. <laughs> that's to start. a very good place to start. <laughs> uh, uh, Disney Lord. reference. Yes. Um, the, yes. How about we, we talk about, let's just go for some low hanging fruit. Um, yeah. Uh, fast passes. At, at, at this point, I, I'm okay if they don't come back. Yeah, I, I mean, would agree we talked a little bit about it's hard to predict what it'll be like when crowds are normal again. But again, I I, I can't help but think that that fast pass system just was a bottleneck for the traditional standby queue. Right. I agree. Yeah. I mean, it, it made the standby line much longer. I mean, when you let 30 fast pass people go to every four standby people, obviously the standby line is going to be four times as long. So, I mean, I, I would agree. I would not be sad if it did not come back. Um, it may come back in some form, but let's hope that there's more standby people than fast pass people. Yeah. I mean, I, I've enjoyed, you know, and again, we talked about this briefly last episode, but I, I've enjoyed the spontaneity of, well, how long is this wait? Let's go there. Right. And so, yeah. I mean, it seems like I always was horrible at, of choosing fast pass times and I, I either did it like right smack in the dab in the middle of when we were all starving and ready to eat lunch and had to wait yeah. or it was one of those weird things where we went like right at the beginning right of the of the hour we had a whole hour and then our next fast pass was at the end of the next hour yeah. so it was yeah. always kind of hard to try to manage it and figure it out and where you wanted to be and what you wanted to do this has just been kind of like oh cool you will go to haunted mansion let's go yeah. get in line yeah yeah, because sometimes the fast pass worked out where even if you got in the fast pass line, you still waited for 20 minutes or so or whatever it would be. So you could go the second half of the hour and then you're like, OK, so now we have Haunted Mansion coming up after this so we can go right there. Um, but, yeah, it's nice to be able to just be like, oh, Haunted Mansion's a walk on. Let's go walk on yeah. Haunted Mansion. When you're done Haunted Mansion, let's go on Big Thunder. Like you, the worst was like, what can we do for 40 minutes? Right. <laughs> while we wait for our next fast pass. So I'm glad that the spontaneity is back as well. So yeah, I, I've enjoyed that. Um all right, so that's one. And these are in no particular order. Brandon, what's one that you have enjoyed a change that was you never saw coming because obviously no one in the yeah. world saw this yeah. happening? What's one for you? One of my favorites is physical distancing on transportation. I wish that <laughs> that stayed the, the ferry boat, man. I mean, I love the ferry boat. That's how I prefer usually to get to and from the magic kingdom, just cause it's outside. It's on the water. It's a boat, but during normal times, they pack so many people on that ferry boat that if that thing went down, we're all going down. <laughs> But during, during pandemic time, it was great. You all, every group had their own green dot and you had space and you could breathe and you could enjoy the ride. So I would say transportation, bus, monorail, 
before they put up those crazy dividers on the monorail, they would just say, you know, you guys have your own cabin, you know, each cabin would be marked off, but it didn't Mm -hmm. have those plastic dividers. And that was awesome. So you had a group of four, your group of four went into the one car of the monorail and that was your car. So great. So I wish they would keep physical distancing on transportation. Yeah. Okay. I, I I'm going to go with one that's right there in the same vein, but I, I'm going to say like, I, I've enjoyed the physical distancing in the queues <laughs> because there's nothing 100%. like Johnny jr. That runs his face into your butt every time because he's not paying attention and mom and dad are on their phones mm. and you're like, can you get your snotty kid off of me? <laughs> like this is my bubble. Like, so I've enjoyed the six foot mm. bubble or now I guess there's three foot, but well, I don't know, man, are, are, are all the markings gone or is there still? Some? Uh, yeah, no, they're gone. They they've picked them all up. Oh, no. I think. Yeah all physical distancing is I think a thing of the past. So Johnny snot nose will be back. So I will have probably experienced it this week. You probably will have met Johnny snot nose. That's right. How many times in the park will we have said, there's Johnny snot nose, Johnny snot nose. And it's not like, I mean, I'm never going to get upset as a kid. The frustrating part is the clueless parents. Oh my gosh. But then you've got the same thing. You've got adults that, are, you know, face down on their phone and then they run into you too. I mean, so it doesn't even have to be Johnny snot nose. It could be. Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, I'm with you I, in, in normal times. Like whenever you're in a line, why do you have to be an inch and a half from the person in front of you? Like there's nowhere in the world, in the history of society <laughs> that you need to stand in line six inches from the person in front of you. It just, it just doesn't have to happen. So I wish they would keep those stupid lines on the ground just so I could say under my breath, a hundred times in line, uh, they put the lines on the ground for a reason. Um, I said that so many times during COVID. Um, I was like, it was either they put the lines on the ground for a reason, or I guess those people don't care about the lines <laughs> or they can't read English you know, or they can't read English. <laughs> but yeah, I agree with you. Johnny snot knows. Stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy, his dad, <laughs> get off your phone. <laughs> Billy Janice and Johnny snot knows. <laughs> okay. I guess we'll loop those together. So that was number two. Like, it's, the personal space has been fantastic. Personal All right, what's another space. one for you? <laughs> uh, one thing that I hope they keep, and I think they might, is mobile ordering at quick service restaurants. I love yes. mobile ordering. Before quick service restaurants, before it was a free for all. I mean, they would put you in these lines that were 30 people deep and you're waiting in line, you know, just standing there for 45 minutes to order your, you know, two and a half day old flatbread and your French fries that were cooked this morning. So I hope they keep mobile ordering. I love the fact that you can walk around the park. You can pick a time you want to go over there. People don't just sit and camp out anymore because you can't go in there and sit uh, until you you get your food or you you show the people that you've made your order. They need more restaurants, obviously, to open in order to take full advantage of this. But I hope mobile ordering doesn't ever go away. Yeah, I have a feeling that it won't. Right. I mean, just just based on the freedom and the flexibility that it's given the the eating and the eating spaces to not have like that absurd grouping of like you said 30 people deep in line and again same thing people standing right on top of you and of course you know those spaces are narrow to begin with just so they can get as many cash registers as they possibly yep. can in each of those things especially the walk-up quick service yeah I, i've enjoyed it too the caveat though is depending on your day and when you've gone and depending on what places were open, if you like, you you did have to be on the ball if you were thinking about a meal. Like I, I would be ready two hours beforehand and go ahead and schedule your order because you could schedule the time of pickup. So yep. don't be like, oh, it's twelve fifteen, I'm hungry. You could end up waiting one to two and a half hours for you to have a window to get food at any particular quick service. So that is kind of a stay on top of it think of that as like you're being the app and on your fast passes if you're good if you think you want to eat at noon like go ahead and set it up at 10 o'clock like it'd probably be a yeah. good idea to schedule it so yeah that's a good one yeah. yeah um man um what is another one that i've liked um man i'm gonna like i'm gonna 
I'm going to kind of stay in the same vein as you, I think. And that is, um, although there haven't been as many sit down restaurants open, you haven't had to <laughs> book 180 days out to get a reservation. Every t- I have, yep. I, it's no secret to the palms for sure, but definitely on the show, I am absolutely in love with the Skipper Canteen. I love the theming. I love the food. It's not absurdly priced. And there hasn't been a time where, you know, if I know I'm going that I haven't not been able to get a reservation. And so I've enjoyed not having, knowing that like, oh, darn, a week ago was six months out and now I can get nothing on my vacation that I wanted to. And so that, that I've enjoyed. So it's still kind of in the thing that that basically, uh, unless it's something special or you've landed around a special week, whether it was like um, a holiday weekend or during spring break, you could pretty much uh, count on getting a, a reservation for, you know, a lot of the places that are typically harder to get. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we've eaten so many places that I will, you know, I've never, we've been like, well, we can't, there's no way we're going to get in there. Right. Um, you know, we've been to California grill. We've been, you know, to, uh, some places at the grand Floridian that if it was just a, like Narcoosie's, like we've never been able to get a reservation for that. We were able to walk up and sit down, uh, during this time. So there definitely is advantages. Um, I wish it would stay. I hope that we don't have to worry about going back to 180 day dining reservations just because again, we talk about our love of spontaneity. Like I don't, I don't know what I want to eat for dinner tonight. Like (laughs) how am I going to know what I want to eat for dinner in six months? Um, so yeah, I hope, I I hope that kind of stays. I hope the spontaneity and the, the availability kind of stays. I dig it. All right. So that, that's a handful. Do you have, do you have any more? Uh, I would say, and there's no way this is going to happen. Obviously Disney's a business. There's no way it could physically happen, but I have, loved the lower crowds at yeah. Disney world. I, I wish there was a way that they could still make money and they could limit all the parks to 50% capacity yeah. because that seems to be like the sweet number where you're not going to wait in line forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're still going to have some waits 30, 40 minutes, but you're not going to wait two hours for right, any rides, right. but you know, there's no way they can do it. There's no way to make money doing that. Um, it was fantastic when they first opened last year yeah. in July uh, and there were zero people in the parks and it was like you had the park to yourself. So I wish they could keep lower capacity limits. Maybe, you know, they have lower capacity days for Florida residents. <laughs> that go, would be, yeah. that would be amazing. But uh, yeah, I wish there was some way we could figure out how to keep capacity down a little bit because it yeah. makes it a much more enjoyable park experience. Yeah, it has been great. I, I didn't go like, I mean, I know you guys were there, so you went pretty early. Matthew went, gosh, really early. Like, I think August was when they had originally went. I, I think I was November before I got to go. Yep. But even – and I went there specifically for the changeover of, um, like, fall de- decor to Christmas decorations. So I plan. I think I went, like, the 4th through the 7th or something like that, and the 6th was the changeover, or the 4th through the 8th, I can't remember. And so, like, I parked myself underneath the Christmas tree and watched every cavalcade come down. But even <laughs> then, it was like – I mean, I went, I was like, oh my gosh, it felt like, it felt like what one of the parties used to feel like yeah, seven exactly. or eight years ago. Exactly. And you go to them and you're like, man, this is great. There's hardly anybody here. Now the parties are worse than park day sometimes. But yeah, I agree that that has been, and what's fun, like I mentioned this last year, like I have been more times with this 12 month annual pass than I've ever ever been with any other past and it's because it just fits so well for me and the way i like to go to disney short little trips least amount of planning like i mean you know brandon like sometimes i'll i'll, I'll call you like hey man are, are, are you guys free this weekend uh not this but like this this particular <laughs> yeah, date weekend yeah. and i was like I, I think i'm coming and it's like five weeks away like i mean it just uh, you just yeah. there's no way you could plan disney like that two years ago. There's no, no. way no. Um, you wouldn't have been like hotels would have been a challenge to get. Like you wouldn't have gotten any fast passes. I mean, it just would have been, uh, it just, it was just wasn't achievable to do. And so like, I've really enjoyed this kind of like freedom and flexibility of, yeah, let's just go. Cause the numbers are down and you don't have to worry about so much planning. So that's exactly, that's been great. Yep. 
Yeah. I don't know if I have, I don't know if I have any more. I mean, that was, that was uh, five good ones and we grouped one together. Yeah. But yeah, I would say yeah. like fast pass, physical distancing on attractions and transportation, uh, quick service, mobile ordering and easier to get um, reservations for food and yeah, low crowds. Like, I think those are, those are five good things that we wish would so. never go away. Right. Yeah. I, I wish. Would. Good yep. quick episode. Hey, I do want to talk about that. We love being able to partner with, um, I'm going to stop here. Cause I can't remember. What is it? Magic of the mouse radio. What is it? Mag- magic, magic of the mouse radio. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll cut to me so I can do that. Love partnering with magic of the mouse radio. It has been so fun to like be a part of their show. So they do, of course, uh, radio 24 seven on the 365 network. If you just Google magic of the mouse radio, you can find them. They don't have a spe- specific address for their show, but you can find uh, park music. You can find movie music. And of course they have a whole slew of different podcasters that they play. And so we're one of the shows that play in there twice a week, typically on the weekends. And so if you follow them on their social media, they always blast out when they're playing us. It's typically on Saturday and Sunday. So it is always a joy to be a part of them and be on that network. And so we're super thankful to Bill and the guys over there at magic of the mouse radio. So check them out. You might get some, um, put you in the Disney mood in between trips and be able to catch maybe an ADP episode or two while you're listening. So yeah, yes. magic of the mouse radio. We love them. Yes, we do. So and good. don't forget to check out our neighborhood. Obviously, we got some great shows uh, yeah. on our on our another Disney podcast channel. We got some plan for the magic. We got uh, Tom with Fly Mickey Travel. We got Emily starting up with her Disney Plus and Pixie Dust show. We got some great stuff coming your way, uh, you know. And we're super happy to have all those those people as a part of our network. So make sure you check them out uh, throughout the summer. Yeah, I'm excited about Emily launching. She'll be kicking off right kind of in the middle of Loki. And so that'll be a perfect time for them to launch and get their show going. And what a great name, Disney Plus and Pixie Dust. I was really worried about, I was like, there's some really clever Disney Plus names out there. What are we, what is she going to come up with? And then boom, I was like, mind blown. There you go. And then yes, if you are like the rest of the world that is itching to get back to a theme park, please connect with Tom over at Fly Mickey Travel. That's flymickeytravel.com. He is our go to Disney vacation plan planner for the win love this guy and of course like brandon said he does a show on our network as well a weekly show talking about that and so if if you have any interest in any international parks man tom is the hookup for that but hey if you're just looking to go to any park in the states he can do that as well and of course adventures by disney he covers it all anything that's the house of the mouse he and his team take care of it fly mickey travel and we love that they've come on board we're loved that they're a sponsor of the show. And of course that he has his own show that is phenomenal. And if you haven't been able to on our YouTube page, please check out his weekly video. That's kind of like a recap of the news of the week of all, all things Disney, not just your U S parks, but the international parks as well. He's really got a beat on those. So love you, Tom. Thanks for all that you're doing as a part of our network. And it's been super fun to launch all these new shows and crazy to think that like our silly little show has launched into this network of shows, which reminds me if you, if you are using Apple and listening to us on Apple podcasts, they just have finally released. It's officially out worldwide um, channels. And so if you go on there and you search another Disney podcast and when you find any of our shows and then again, click on the little words that say another Disney podcast. I know that's a weird way to get there, <laughs> but it will take you to our show page, which has all of our channel. I'll take you to our channel page, which has all of our shows. So I'm really nice. excited about that new update. Um, so yeah. The, another Disney right now we have five shows we'll soon have six crazy crazy so we got your Disney fix we got you that's right I right, Brandon here's hoping that we um, just finished up a immaculate week of nothing but fun in the sun and yes indeed and I'm sure some downpours <laughs> Tis the and I hope you know I hope we're still friends after that and <laughs> we we come back into another show next week oh no I guess there's only one way to find out <laughs> <laughs> We'll see you next week, suckers. See you next time.